Martin Cider, third generation, um, 68 years old, have been involved in farming since the early 1970s. Farming is, it's, it's an unbelievable life. We're down to maybe 12 commercial farmers. I'm only guessing now, but I don't think it's much over a thousand acres. The families that are left doing, I truly mean the commercial growers that are making their living at this, we're all in our 60s, all asking questions on what's, what are they going to do. And I think there's a majority of them that sort of feel diversification is either going to be in, in, in play or there's going to be the end of the potato operation. May 22nd and we're planting our last couple of acres of potatoes some of which have been delayed because of the spring and some because of there's some rotten seed that we obtained for in a load from Maine and uh, did not make it through this uh, this particular spring the reason why we are even planting at this late date is that I thought I could salvage some of the fields and when I found out uh, at least one section of the field completely rotted out from a soft rot or something that was in the seed that was brought down here in April so the report that came back said it could be a disease that was here five or six, seven years ago that did substantial damage. There's not ex a whole lot you can do. I don't, I, I think the planning at this late stage is, that's it. So I'll, I'll do what I need to do. That's not gonna change what I'm going to do. But now I wonder how much of that fuel will actually even come through. Because when I do see a couple of green rows coming up, there's a good feeling like maybe we got past the worst, but this new, uh, new generation black leg is something that's much more formidable than that. They will just continue to die. There'll be no crop there. So you'll see a row of green potato plants and each and every day if the conditions are such and usually hot and humid, and, the, and you'll see them just keep dropping out. However it ends up, it's gonna end up, it's gonna, it's gonna be its own uh, determinant, not me. So we, we, we will see, we will see. Make sure I cover them because the ground is like cement. All right, I'll go a little bit deeper. Get me ply it. Okay, this is uh, we're on a 16 or 17 acre field, and uh, we knew I knew that we had a problem with the first load of seed that was delivered in early April. So I've been checking that field once, twice every week. And it's come, I sort of made up my mind here a couple of days ago that I said, okay, this field is completely wasted. I have to do something different or we're going to basically replant and hopefully it's not too late and the weather turns around where there's good growing conditions and I can salvage something out of this. But what makes the seed potato so susceptible is because it's got, when you cut it, that open skin is where that infection can settle in. In Europe, in Poland, and then elsewhere in Europe, they plant whole seed. They do not cut. And it's less prone to disease. In this country, that was too costly. Uh, by the time you brought the seed down, the certified seed, so they learned long time ago that they cut it in small pieces and planted it. But then you have to put the dust, potato dust on it and try to do the best you can as far as managing disease. So it's a catch-22. This year I got caught. This year I got caught. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a lottery. And so it's my turn this year. Okay, I'm, I'm speaking here today in my grandparents' house. They, as immigrants, wanted their families to do well, which is the story of all the immigrants. Coming on a farm wasn't something that was uh, the intent of the family, okay? Basically, I was sent off to college and for those four years to, to, to do what I wanted to do. It was maybe a year after college, I think that I did some side jobs. And I think my father, he said one day, he said, okay, that's enough. 
We'll plant 20 acres, we'll see how it goes, and we'll take it from there. And as time went on, the passion, you, you got a sense of that pride on and what it took when you saw that field that looked good. And, and I said, wow, there's, you can't buy that. It, you know, it, it's, it's really, and, and, I, and also as I got older, I realized that's not me. There's other things in play here. There's, there's, you have to have the proper rain and the sunlight and not enough, not too much heat, not enough. So you got to understand it really wasn't about me and there's this balance in life and there's other things that you, you, know, you took from that. And so, so I think farming is basically tackling the problems that come about. You, it's, you're dealing with nature that's not, never gonna give you the answer. So here it is in the latter part of July, which is, which is traditionally during the uh, potato operation would be irrigation, irrigation. Our next step in the process would be to get the potato harvesters ready, to get the grading operation ready, which is the machine where we're bagging potatoes and palletizing all these bags and, and getting them into the market. Also getting some potatoes, diverting some into the potato chip line. It's, it's very seasonal and that is, the, that is the neat thing about farming that there's nothing that lasts for an extended period of time. And I've always felt when you have that changeover and you've lost that energy, you're still tired from the previous season, then it's time you gotta consider, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's enough. Maybe the time has come where you either lost the passion or whatever. I'm a retired farmer. My name is John Nirodzik. I used to raise 165 acres of potatoes and about 75 acres of assorted vegetables. And I only help some of my farmer friends out, and Marty happens to be one of them. And I've done it for several years for him. Things have changed around here. It used to be, when I was farming, there used to be a lot of potatoes, acres and acres of potatoes. And today, most of the potato farms, mine included, all five of them, are vineyards and the, the grapes are taking over. The future of Long Island potatoes, I truthfully will say, is just about at its end. It could, it could end after this year because there's nobody around that's willing to grade the potatoes after you dig them and harvest them. The young generation, just, they just don't want to do it. They're after the six-figure out-of-college money. They want to go to work with a suit and a tie, and they don't want to get dirty. <laughs> it's not nice to say, I mean, that's all I did all my life. It's all I know. And uh, it's been good life for me. And uh, I hate to see it go, but it's gone. It's done. There's, there's, there's rhyme and reason for anything. It's just amazing that a plant can produce this, uh, like a starch bulb. It's just amazing. They, they seem to be fine. Uh, but these skins are sufficient. They're sufficient. Family on a farm is very important for a lot of reasons. You obviously need their support. Originally coming here to the farm uh, was probably an eye-opener because I wasn't used to, you know, a farm life. I didn't come from that. And uh, so suddenly I was given chores and jobs and helped to pitch in. And I, that was okay by me because I didn't want to drive the big John Deers or anything and probably nor would they have trusted me to do it, so. <laughs> I think it took her time to get adjusted to the pace. There was, there was like lunch, we sat down and had lunch and I, I, you know, I'd race around the table and whatever I could stuff in my mouth, 
racing around the table three times. That was it, see you later, and, and, and that kind of a thing. And I think she became annoyed after a while. What am I doing all this for when you're not, we're not sitting down and talking? The life of the potato on Long Island is not going to be. So right now we're in kind of a looking at what possibilities there are. We've done the potato chips for about 15 years now. The sunflower maze was done this past summer. So, you know, not sure what's gonna happen. John's a good man. He's had a, he's had a uh, heck of a life. So anyway, we're going to take this to the barn. Yeah. October 2nd uh, and basically we're storing the crop now so this is probably a quarter full, full. Uh, basically I expect the crop from what I've sampled so far to be full which it would be about 12 13,000 hundredweights again for either chips or the uh, or wholesale and bags and uh, and that's it's not a bad crop I'm satisfied we had some problems during the course of the year but uh, with the acreage that I have in a full barn uh, not bad not bad he's kind of how old do you think Chris was there? Okay, on a farm, there's going to be good days and bad days. And, that just, and I guess that's for any business and, and everybody. There's, there's good times and bad times. You know, and hopefully that, that next good day is right around the corner. And that's what keeps you going. And at the end of the day, if you planted your 15 or 20 acres back when times were good, you know, we had to help and everything, and it's no longer today for me. But when you do all that and you come home, there's nothing better than that. There's nothing better than that.